thing to point out for everybody is we all start at zero. Everybody starts at zero. Mr. Beast started at zero. Logan Paul started at zero. Everybody starts at zero. Rewind, recap, relive. For over 50 episodes, the revolutionary force in wrestling interviews. So yeah, you mentioned so YouTube and you've grown now, you're able to hire people, but I've watched some timelines of big YouTubers out there, like Mr. Beast, for example, I was just watching his timeline of success. And I think it could be really encouraging for some, some wrestling podcasters out there to hear if you remember a rough timeline of what your success was like. You mentioned starting in 2005. Um, oh, sure. On. Yeah. So yeah. 2005, YouTube didn't even really exist. Uh, right. I was... <laughs> I got my very first job as a TV reporter. Actually, I got my first job as an intern at a TV station. And then when they ended up hiring me, I was writing, editing, producing, shooting, and reporting all of my own stories. So I would go with the camera, shoot the video, take the actual tape, ingest it into a system and edit like tape to tape. That's where it began for me. 2007, I got a job for MTV2 Canada, and I was interviewing a lot of celebrities. That's where I like first started working in entertainment. And that's where I got my first ever wrestling interview. Bobby Lashley was in town with WWE. He was the ECW champion at the time. So that was the first wrestling interview, 2007. And wow. I started uploading videos at that time on YouTube, just kind of because the old school model of broadcasting just kind of sucks in that like, unless you're watching that exact channel at that exact time on that exact day, you'll never see that piece of content. And right. I was just like, that sucks if I'm interviewing a big band or a big celebrity. I want other fans of their work to be able to see it. So I just started taking those interviews, putting them on this YouTube channel with like a, a dumb name that wasn't even related to me because I didn't want my <laughs> boss to find out I was doing this. I was ripping them from my oh website. My God putting them up on YouTube. But 2011, I started the YouTube channel that I have now. And I think a big thing to point out for everybody is we all start at zero. Everybody starts at zero. Mr. Beast started at zero. Logan Paul yeah. started at zero. Everybody starts at zero. And I think it's too easy in the world that we live in to just look at someone with a million subscribers, 20 million subscribers, 100 million subscribers, whatever it happens to be and go, oh, that's, I can't do that. That's, that's too far off. That mountain peak is too high. But for me, it was 2011, I started, I didn't get that silver play button right there until I was six and a half years into doing it. So, no, seven and a half years. I didn't get it to 2018. See, that's so, so crazy. Yeah. It was a heck of a journey. It was like, you know, grinding it out. And I think that the big thing there is just start and just be consistent. I think, you know, it's so my timeline there is starting that channel, 2011 and here we are now 2023 the main channel has 385,000 subscribers the clips channel which is called cbv mm -hmm. clips where i put just the short moments and uh, great memories from these interviews up on the one channel that has exploded so that started like two years ago i hit 400,000 subscribers on sunday it's now at like 425,000 subscribers five days later now like the growth on that wow. channel has been crazy and i believe the big takeaway there is i think a lot of people will say oh attention spans they're way down yeah sure maybe that factors into it a little bit but i think the bigger thing is if someone texts you a link to an hour-long youtube video or an hour-long podcast and says oh jonah you've got to see this podcast you're going to click on that link you're going to see the runtime and you are immediately <laughs> going to click off of that video Right. But if someone sends you a 27 second clip from that exact same episode and says, oh man, you got to check this out. Pretty good chance you're going to watch that 27 second clip. I like to think of those as breadcrumbs. And hopefully you okay. like those breadcrumbs enough that it leads you to the slice of bread, which for me is like a three to five to eight minute full clip. And if you like that slice of bread enough, maybe you'll be interested to go check out the loaf of bread, which is the full episode. I love that analogy so much as someone who recently like started doing reels as well and shorts. And I also do clips. I think dividing it onto a channel though was so smart of you like to do that. 
Um, but yeah, I think I love that analogy. I have and not that heard was, the, that the bread analogy my, before. That wasn't my brilliance or my idea there. It's, I, I just saw what other channels were doing, like right. other big podcast channels. Joe Rogan, perfect example before he went to Spotify. He had a main channel and he had a clips channel. Logan Paul had a main channel and an impulsive clips channel. And I was just like full send, main channel and then full a clips send. channel. I went, <laughs> There's something here. Tony Robbins always says success leaves clues. So I'm like, if they're all, all doing this, I should probably follow suit. I don't know why, but I should probably do what they're doing. No, absolutely. Uh, and you've inspired, and I'm sure you've run into a lot of them, but there's so many wrestling interview YouTubers um, like myself at, at, a, at a small level who will get like discouraged if they put so much work into a video and it doesn't get the views that they desire. And so it's interesting to hear that your journey was a slow burn. And, and I think, like you said, kind of re re-engineering all of those journeys for like the million subscribers, two subscribers. It's so it is, it's encouraging to see that it keeps, keeps you going. I think. Yeah. You got to realize that every overnight success, you know, took 10 years or whatever right. it took to get there. Yeah. It's, and the other thing is you got to make content because you like making content. If you are making content because you're trying to hit a certain number of views with every single video, or you're trying to get to a certain number of subscribers, like right away, you should probably just stop what you're doing right now. If you don't love every part of the process of creating the content, then you're totally approaching it wrong, in my opinion. Right. If you think it's, if it feels like a chore or work or something like that. right? And if it does, if it feels like a chore or work, then you probably shouldn't be doing it because yeah. you should be putting your time and your focus and your effort into the things that juice you up and the things that excite you. Rewind, recap, relive for over 50 episodes, the revolutionary force in wrestling interviews.